Alrighty, so following the trend with the Woodland Beautio, we have another uh, example of this, this type, these confused uh, open space birds that want to live in the forest. Unlike the broad-winged hawk, the red-shouldered hawk here is rarely seen in Colorado. Um, but once again, because we're in such a great location and the word has gotten out how beautiful our state is, we have seen both adult and juvenile, our first year red shoulders cruising through here the last few years. We had a, a juvenile bird up in the Fort Collins area for a few months, and then um, actually an adult was spotted flying uh, in the South Lakewood area. So the red shouldered hawk gets its name from the rusty color. It's a little bit hard to see up on its wrist area, very similar um, to where the Harris hawk has its, you know, sort of rusty primary coverts. This bird is found almost everywhere in the United States except in Colorado and sort of the dry Rocky Mountain region. There are, depending on which book you read, there are four or five recognized forms, certainly four distinct subspecies. Um, the darkest form is the red shoulder that is found along the Pacific coast from about the Oregon border down to uh, San Diego. And then there's a form in Texas. The palest form is in Florida, and they are very, very, very light. Their, their heads are almost a, a pale grayish brown, uh, almost like a peach sorbet form on the chest. You are really puffing up here, aren't you, buddy? And then there's the sort of main uh, New England uh, mid-Atlantic form, which he is. And there is a northern form, which is the largest, which is found in Canada, upstate New York, and Maine. So the red-shouldered hawk has a very, very long tail. And if you compare the way his tail looks compared to the broad-winged hawk, his stripes are much skinnier, or his bands. His tail is mostly what you could call black with thinner white stripes. They also have these beautiful sort of checkered colored primaries on their wings. When you see them soaring, he's missing a couple feathers still from the molt, you see the black and white, especially as they fly under the sun. It's extremely distinct. And the crest that you're seeing him raise is also a very common posture as well. Um, these guys scream on a territorial basis all the time. Um, I'm originally from the San Francisco Bay Area, and when I was visiting my in-laws in Berkeley, I woke up one day to the sounds of her red-shouldered hawk screaming in the hills near the Berkeley campus, and for a minute I thought I was back home here at REF. Um, very, very territorial, but again, if you look at the feet, small feet. So these guys, like the broad-winged hawk, have a very um, varied diet. Small mammals, of course, nestling songbirds, also frogs, newts, amphibians. These guys will wade into uh, ponds to catch aquatic prey, including crayfish. And interesting enough to me, um, people have even seen them hanging on suet cages in the winter, eating bits of fat and presumably swallowing the seeds and not caring or just, you know, kind of discarding them. And most researchers think that they have just identified it as a fat source and are looking for a few extra calories, you know, when it's really, really cold. This guy is uh, five years old now, and he has somewhat of an interesting story. He was found in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, and he was on the ground the end of June with a uh, fractured radius and a dislocated ulna. He was still being fed by his parents and he had a crop full of June bugs. So it wasn't a bad injury. He again was taken to the Carolina Raptor Center and the wing was repaired. He was put in a pre-release flight pan, but unfortunately, and you know, sometimes this just happens, he managed to bang his foot hang on something or whatever, but break off the rear facing talon or the halix on his left foot. The halix is the largest talon on the foot of most raptors. 
And to lose one at such a young age when you probably have never even caught a mouse on your own, that's a career ending injury. And it wasn't just the black keratin sheath that came off, it was the bony core. So they, I think, very rightly decided that it was just a death sentence to release a bird this young into the wild, missing that critical toe. So that's how we came to uh, acquire him. And he is to this day a very, very bouncy bird with a lot of attitude. He's being quiet now, but if you come to our facility, you will hear him calling constantly. They sound like car alarms. The other interesting thing about red-shouldered hawks is that um, in the California Pacific Coast area, they really love vineyards. They love vineyards, they love eucalyptus trees, they have adapted very well to a more suburban landscape. And their feet are small enough that you can see them sitting on telephone wires. So if you do go birding north of the Golden Gate Bridge in Marin County, out towards the redwoods and stuff, don't look in the deep conifer or redwood forests for red shoulders. Look for them in wine country. There's my hint.